Have you ever wanted to fight a god and his creations from hell? WHAT THE FUCK?! How about playing TF2 without playing TF2? The healing is not as rewarding as the hurting! Ever wanted to fight a literal ancient god with no face? No, 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 so much no! I honestly don't care if you answered yes or no to any of these questions, because I'm going to be answering those questions and more than likely bully you. Welcome to Risk of Rain 2. How'd you like that for an intro? It's called engagement. You should try it sometime. Welcome to this new video that was so painful to record, I actually think that getting ripped a new asshole would be more pleasurable. Anyway, Risk of Rain 2, a far cry from the original game back in 2013, but when looking at both the first and second games, it is easy to see that they kept all the designs that they had and just put them into a 3D environment. Might I add, they also did a really wonderful job at doing this. Now, I can't promise that I'll stay on topic all the way through, but I'll try my best. Loading up the game will show you this intro cutscene, and I don't think a cutscene has ever been more uninteresting than the intro to Muppet Monster Adventure. You're a brave frog again. Get the monsters, get the monsters, go, 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 go. I decided that to start my first ever run, I was gonna choose Buzz Lightyear because I wanted this world to understand how much shit they were about to get into. Let's go over some quick stuff real quick. Every run will start the same with you hurtling at unsafe speeds till you break all your bones once impact happens. And once you take some painkillers, the next objective is to shorten the lives of all the local wildlife of the planet. Each class has a different skill set for this objective. For example, Commando has dual pistols, Huntress has a bow, and the mercenary uses bullshit. Anyway, that should become a good thing for the environment. You'll come across chests, terminals, and other random structures. And let's get this out of the way now. These tubes give money, these chests give items. Use terminals to buy an item of its choosing, and the Shrine of Luck gives you a gambling addiction. Once you feel like you have enough items, you can find this weird little statue. A teleporter? What the hell is this? Can I interest you in our Lord and Savior, Beetle Christ? Nope, 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 I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Killing the boss gives you the ability to move on to the next environment. Ah yes, it feels uh, like I'm in Afghanistan again. I found this weird teapot that kept healing itself, so I decided to bury my head in the sand and dug to the next area. A homeless 3D printer gave me a syringe, and the most logical thing to do was to immediately stick it into me. Remember kids, Make sure you take the needles from the homeless so that you can use them. I then got fisted to death by an earthbender. It was not an enjoyable experience. I'm gonna have to rate that a 3 out of 10. In case my first experience with the game didn't make sense, let me simplify it as fast as possible. And here we go. Grab money from packages or from enemies. Collect items from terminals, chests, or boss drops. Find the teleporter. I can't find the teleporter. Download a mod telling you where the teleporter is. Defeat the boss. Go through the teleporter. Rinse and repeat. The items you get are of six different rarities, plus one with DLC. Those being white for common, green for uncommon, red legendary, yellow boss slash planet items, blue for lunar items, and orange for equipment. Do you like the color coding the game did? Yeah, it makes it look like a depressing boogie bomb was thrown at the items. Don't worry though, there are 161 items for you to collect and use. Grabbing as many as you can helps turn you into a monster capable of fucking up any animal rights activist. <coughs> okay, the items themselves aren't gonna be the only thing that help you survive, but they do make a massive difference. If you do want to survive longer besides using items, movement is your best friend which is why you can stack so many speed items together that you can leave the fabric of reality if you wanted to. Speaking of stacking items, you can stack items and the effects will multiply when you have more of that item. A great example of this is the Hopo feather. Ho Hopo? Hopo. Hopo? What? The Hopo feather, which gives the player an extra jump, and when the item is stacked, it basically allows you to fly to any point on the stage. Or, what about the Red Whip? which gives you a speed boost when not in combat. What if we combined these two items? Well, I did. 
And when you do, you can literally skip the entirety of the last stage and immediately get to the boss. There are many little details that I'll explain later when we get to the characters. Uh, oh, and I forgot to mention that there are two different difficulty types. The first one being the one at the start, those being Drizzle, Medium, and Monsoon. And the second difficulty being World Slash Enemy difficulty. You see that bar in the top right? Well, that constantly increases as the runtime goes on, making your situation much harder, just like real life. Anyway, if there's a boss at the end who always has bullshit tactics, but allows you to either escape the moon, or be the first person to ever die on the moon. Actually, I think I need to explain a bit more on how to get to the final boss. Okay, let's try this. There are a total of six different stages, with stages one, two, three, and four, all having three different environments for the stages. The first stage has dissonant roots, titanic submersed <laughs> titanic planes, and siphon forest. Quick. Wait, there's a starting area I still haven't seen? I mean, this is some bullshit. Fuck this. I'll be right back with some footage. <laughs> okay, so I found out that there are a few areas for each of the stages that require you to have a DLC. So you aren't getting footage. Deal with it. I guess that means stages 1, 2, and 3 only have two stages for it to choose. Anyway, the second area has Afghanistan and Vietnam. The third stage has Alaska and North California. And then the fourth stage has a total of three stages. Yes, this is without DLC, which I like to call L Ukraine and the place with the blue avatar people. The fifth and sixth stages only have one stage. Stage five is and the final stage of Genocide Prime. There's a bunch of hidden places that I also won't discuss, so have fun finding those. This may seem complicated, but watch me make it more complicated, motherfucker. There are 11 survivors with an additional three with DLC. The 11 main survivors are Vietnam Vet, Mommy, Shooty Shooty Bang Bang, Mulk, Engineer Gaming, Dandy Nagoff, Solid Snake Anime Reference, Homeless War Vet, Spider-Man, Uwu, Scaly Whaley, and Mark. As you can see, each uses different skills. For example, the Artificer has magic, the Huntress uses a bow, and the Mercenary uses creative mode. He's able to swing a sword, and when an enemy is hit, he is able to achieve the miracle of flight. Which is why he has an achievement to not touch the ground for 30 damn seconds. Fuck this achievement and this survivor. The original plan for this video was to talk about my journey to getting every achievement, but I didn't even get close. In 30 hours of playing, I couldn't even get half. I did try, however, and on this journey my sanity became so non-existent that I had better chances of actually getting a girlfriend. Here's what I can say that may or may not help you if you attempt to get them all, and do not try to do all of them in the fastest time possible if you will only take the fun out of the game, causing you to contract a disease known as depression. Doctors do recommend that you take 3-4 days of rest and drink lots of bleep. I managed to only get 50 of the 118 achievements, with the hardest one that I was able to get being Power Plant, which I will explain now. In order to get most of the characters, a certain condition must be met. For instance, to get the captain, you must beat the game on any difficulty. A crit is obtained by doing the challenge of stabilizing the cell in the void fields. The Power Plant challenge is how you unlock Rex. The way this is completed is by opening the panel on the back of your pod, taking this fuel array, and then get to stage 4 and hope to god you get the Abyssal Depths. You need to get to this specific area since Rex is here. And now this wouldn't be much of a problem, you know? Except for two things. One, for me it took 40 runs just to get to the area I needed. So I was already losing my mind. And two, once you pick up the Fulery, you become a suicide bomber. You cannot get to 50% or lower health or else that suicide vest that you're wearing will kill you and every single one of your teammates that are within the vicinity of you. And that is a guarantee or your money back. So I wish you the best of luck. I pretty much gave up trying to get the rest of the achievements after I completed that challenge because I saw myself taking the fun out of the game. A game where I could become a walking version of America. And because of that, I found the best part about this game. Okay, now that we're done with that, what's the next topic? Money? 
Finally, I, I get to, I get to talk about the modding of the game. Let's fucking go. After I beat the game, me and Dusty both decided that we wanted to try and mod the game, and Dusty left for about five minutes, so that allowed me to run wild. Because within five minutes of him being gone, I figured out not only how to mod the game perfectly and easy, easily, but I found some of the worst shit possible. So I'm going to describe how this modding process works for you. Let me bring you over to the desktop and show you Thunderstore and, uh, and I can barely see this shit. How do I, how, do, how am I going to fix this? Should I, ah, fuck it. Hey, IRL me. What? 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 Why, what do you want? Why are you breaking the fourth wall? I'm just trying to edit the video, man. Your background. I can't see the fucking icon, man. Okay, and? What do you want me to do about it, man? Motherfucker, if you don't fix this icon. How do you want me to fix it, man? Open up wallpaper engine. Are we, are we really about to change my entire background just for this one icon? Yes. And now, let's take a look at what we have and look at what will work. Why the fuck do you have so many weird ones? And please tell me why you have two that involve Putin and anime women. Stop fucking questioning me and just choose. Fine, let's see. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, DDLC, D&D. &D. How about this MILF Monday one? No, 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 we can't use that because the music is copyrighted. Ah, oh, shit, you're right about that one. Second page, please. That's a lot of Sayori. Do you have anything that you want to talk about? Nope. No, 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 no. Can we, can we just please get this over with, man? Okay, okay. I saw this one earlier. Go back to the page and choose Escape. Sounds good. Are we done? Yes. Thank you. Uh, you were a mistake. Back to what I was saying, go to Thunderstore and you can create a profile. From there, all you're going to do is get these two mods that are pinned. The other mods don't work without them. Once that's all done, you can choose any and all mods you want. Want to make Huntress into Luna from Hell of a Boss? I got you. Want to add so many mods that you don't actually know what you did? Perfect. Want to make every survivor into Kermit? Fuck it. This modding can definitely get out of hand, like when I was able to spawn unlimited items until I had more than enough firepower to kill Takia. The entire planet, god, and cause the death of the multiverse to become a canon event. But sometimes you just have to play as TF2 Medic with enough missiles to overthrow a small nation. Speaking of the TF2 Medic mod, this class is one of the best to play if you're playing with multiple people. Thanks to the ability to play like you're playing the actual Medic, you can make any basic enemy or boss completely useless against you and your team, including the final boss. Most of the mods that we did add were skins for the survivors, so that we could have Doug Dimidome fighting alongside Rousey, Golden Freddy, and Kermit. What more could you ask for? We also made it so that we could drop items that we had picked up, allowing us to share items that we needed for each other to be more effective. However, like I said earlier, there is a limit to what you should mod, into the game, because on one end of the scale, it's bad. Not the no, 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 so much nope. On the other end of the scale, we have a mod like Uwuify, which makes it near impossible to read anything in this game, which is perfect for the fur community, since I don't think they know how to read normal English. I know I said something about this final boss earlier in the video, but I want to talk a bit more about the final boss and the final stage where you find him. The boss's name is Mithrix, and in order to get to him, there is one final challenge to show that you are ready. The challenge and the boss takes place on the fucking moon. That's right, we fight the boss on the moon, which is currently crumbling, and that's what I call fucking atmosphere. Let me tell you about this area. On stage 5, the teleporter will look like this, and once activated, you just need to beat the boss, which is a damn hula hoop with a body. Once you go through, this is what you first see of stage 6. And walking for a bit leads you to this scene. That platform up there is where Mithrix is. 
and to get to him, we need to capture any of the four pillars in the area before us. There are four different types of pillars that can be captured, those being pillars of mass, design, soul, and blood. When you start a pillar, it will also spawn enemies around you, so if you are in an enclosed space, have fun. Once four pillars have been captured, you can jump up to Mithrix and start the final boss fight. This fight is a great example of how you can still get fucked up even when you have enough bullets to kill God. The first phase is a standard phase of just him swinging a hammer and doing AoE damage. The second phase is a bunch of enemies, and the third phase is basically the same as the first. The fourth phase is the most unique of all the phases. Mithrix takes your items that make you so powerful and then starts to fight you with his hands. Wait a second. He took my fucking drugs. Don't worry, you can get both your items and more importantly, your mushrooms just by damaging Mithrix. Once you fuck the man so hard he has to bend over, you need to run back to this ship back near the start, where you make one last stand to survive. And if you manage to fuck over the entire population of hell, you fly off and watch as the moon reduces to atoms. And that's the end, right? Wrong. This section is going to be a lot shorter than the others since this is a small mechanic within the game. Looping is simple to perform and allows you to extend the current run for as long as you can survive. All you need to do is get to stage 5, also known as Sky Meadows, and find the teleporter. But instead of starting the teleporter right away, you're going to first interact with the largest stone in the circle, and then wait for it to be aligned with the planet. You can verify this by its new position or by the text in the, uh, in the game. Then you're going to do the teleporter event. Once you go through the teleporter, you end up back in one of the stage one environments and you just continue like normal. You can do this as many times as you want with the only problem being the enemy difficulty. And by the way, there's an achievement for using the loop a few times. So have fun with that. Is this game worth it? Yes, absolutely worth playing. The price may be a bit of a problem to some people, $25 for it, but this game can be found on sale every once in a while. If you have friends, uh, never mind. Y'all don't have friends. All right, let's, let's say you do have friends, hypothetically. If you all get the game together, then you will have a shitload of fun. The constant difficulty increase helps keep the idea of push forward fast, conflicting with the taking time to get items idea that causes players to have to make decisions that could get them killed later on. There's a lot of shit that I didn't even talk to you guys about, like the various enemy types, portals, special challenges, or the DLC. So there's plenty of content for you to still discover while playing. Modding also brings even more content that will bring you even more to fuck around with and kill off your brain cells. So yeah, have some fun, my friends.